Trey, what, what's at stake now? You, you got the BMF title over him. You had the better performance over him. As you can see, they jumped your train at the press conference. What's at stake now for you, man? Um, at the end of the day, for me, it's just competing, man. It's not, this one's more at stake than the last one because every fight, the smallest of the fights or the biggest of the fights have led to this, you know, so I take every fight with the same amount of caution and respect, you know, whoever I'm fighting has two hands, you know. Now, on a personal level, yeah, I don't like this dude at all for what happened with my coach and shit, but we'll figure it out July 6th when we get in there. Yeah, what's the mood in the gym after something like that? When you guys get back to the gym, what's you know, kind of the, the mood in the gym? So it went from like boxing setting to kill setting, you know, and just, you know, and that's all I want to do is I want to hurt this dude bad, you know. It's funny that you mentioned Kill because that's the guy's name, Killshot. The guy that was on your coach, that's his yeah. name, Killshot. Yeah, see, I didn't, I thought that was just like some fat lesbian. So when I was grabbing him, swinging him around, like, yo, come wash these dishes, yo, come come do this, I didn't hit him because I thought it was just like a fucking nobody, you know. Now I found out, oh, you're a pro fighter attacking my coach with another homeboy of yours. Cool beans, bro, you know, because that pussy's gonna have to see me or my boys at some point. He's had some big KFC fights. Um, are you into that, or I mean, you made him even kill shot? I'm, I'm in it. Scrapping man, especially you mess with my people. It's like, bro, you know, that's who you chose, you know. And I'm sure that uh, if he doesn't cross paths with me, he's gonna cross paths with some devils pretty soon, man. Go ahead and talk about just your beginnings of you know being on like Kimbo Slice's undercards, you know what I mean? Yes, yards to, like, <laughs> to, to now, you know, the like, real BKFC. <laughs> yeah. Just talk about that when you when you were doing that back then, could you ever imagine that you'd be? getting fat checks for, for doing what you were doing there? 100%. I knew it since I was 13, 14 years old that this was going to be a way of life for me. And when I did the Kimball thing, it just brought me that much closer to, to what I knew was going to happen and become reality. Me becoming a, a fighter, going all over the world collecting checks and getting as much money as fucking possible. All right, what would Kimbo Slice say if he's seen your rise to the top, if he was around, man? I think he passed away before you really got to find your groove. Cool, no, man. definitely, definitely. Um, he shake my hand and tell me, get this bread. Get this bread, ponytail. Come on, Chico. <laughs> Did he give you any advice at all prior to your actual fights when you guys were doing the backyard thing? Did he ever t talk to you at all and tell you like? No, nah, no, nah, he, he would, uh, not before, because he was more like, give me give me my space, you know? But um, it was like uh, after the fight, we, we'd hang out, we'd talk, we'd go eat, we'd do something like that, and it was always love, man. And, he was always like, bro, you got it. You got the gift, bro. Pursue it. Use it. You know, and I was very young, you know, a lot younger than him at the time. So he, he knew that I was 100% invested in it. And I had a lot of things going for me, like youth and talent. Capitio so, told me that Canelo actually got a chance to see you spar. Um, what did he make of your sparring and what advice did he give you? I said he was in there oh, showing you how to throw some things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Canelo actually uh, fucking gave me great advice. Coach was there. And um, actually, a lot of what he told me was things that he's done in every one of his last like 20, 30 fights, you know, so it was just awesome to hear him break it down from his own mouth and then tell me and break it down in a way that I could apply it and use it for myself. So as soon as he told me that, I was like, man, that's awesome. He didn't, he didn't have to do that at all. He didn't have to tell me a damn word. He just blew the fucking mind, right? Like, this, this guy's getting ready. Claro, uh, uh, he's getting ready to defend that belt and He's coming and, and giving me advice like that was amazing, you know. And the advice that he gave me, you will see it July 6th. Uh, you see that? Yeah. 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 That's the last question. Okay. Okay. What do you say to uh, Nate Diaz after what happened at the press conference in America? Now? You know what? At the end of the day, you know, we're going to see each other, you know, July 6th, you know. Just hope they're, 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 they're in good shape, you know, because we're ready, man. We're ready. We're in tip that shape, and I hope they're coming in good shape so we can get a great performance. I know the capability, the ability of my fighter, the tip that shape that he is, and we're coming in danger, man, for sure. How did everyone react to it? You're close friends with people because they're not known to do that, and yeah, your yeah, son, sure. man, your son, you can throw this too. How did everybody react to no, I, I receive a lot of love from all the people, from all the Mexicans, all the Latinos. And I thank for everybody that they, they reach out to me with a message and, 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 and text me. And uh, I love you all. Thank you for the support. Eddie Reynoso, he said yeah, a comment sure. or something? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. He called me too. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Okay.